In this video, I'll be talking about my five-year ownership of this car. We'll be talking about my long-term review and a closer look on if you should go electric or find this on the used market. Testing. System ready. These are some of the top five features of a commendable car. Standout design, performance and handling, fuel economy, reliability, and tech features. Let's talk about the history of the Dodge Dart. They originally made a concept vehicle for the Dodge Hornet in 2006, but they scrapped that idea when the 2009 financial crisis came along. After Fiat merged with Chrysler in 2010, they announced in 2011 the Dodge Dart. This design has an aggressive front end with a wide body stance, smooth LED racetrack lights. Dodge Dart was based on Alfa Romeo DNA as it was based on Alfa Romeo's platform, the Alfa Romeo Giulietta. Leather nappa seats and nice soft plastic trim on the inside. Ambient light to boot. Let's talk about the performance and handling of this car. The Tiger Shark engine had 184 horsepower and 174 pounds of torque. Pretty good pep and performance in this vehicle. Can you get onto it overpass quickly? Yeah. The handling is pretty excellent. This is one of the first cars to have electric steering and it performs well. It tightens up when you're going highway speeds. It loosens up in the parking lot. So it's really easy to turn the wheel. The suspension was taken from the Giulietta at the time. They kind of took the edge off of it a bit just so it can feel a little more supple in corners and a little more smoother driving experience. Rear multi-link suspension with coil springs and front McPherson struts with four-wheel disc brakes. Cast aluminum polished wheels 225-45 R17. The battery and all the fuses here. Coolant, timing, chain with an accessory belt. The fuel economy was pretty decent for its time. It had about seven liters per 100 kilometers or 34 MPG on the highway, 10 liters or 23 MPG in the city, 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers or 27 MPG combined with a 54 liter tank or 814 gallons. You can get to Vancouver from Kelowna in about three and a half to four hours with a third of your tank loss. This vehicle takes about 87 octane. If you baby the throttle, you might be able to get better fuel economy and try to coast more, that really helps. This vehicle is 3,215 pounds. I've driven this car all the way to California twice and it's never stranded me there. And I've gotten really good fuel economy up to close to 40 miles per gallon. I was driving the first time about 22 hours straight and I was having a consistent speed of about 80 kilometers. So I got really good fuel economy then. With about 100,000 kilometers on this car, I've replaced quite a few components. Thankfully, it was all under warranty. I did do a few recalls in the car, and there's one still pending. I think it's an emissions problem, but I have yet to solve that issue. Some of the parts I've replaced in this car are the engine, fuel pump, loose TPMS sensors, battery, engine fan sensor, Uconnect head unit, ambient lights, which I haven't replaced yet, but they did go out, some of them and I did a PCM reprogram, which might have been a recall. One of the only reliable parts in this car was the Hyundai Powertech 6F24, which has served me really well and I've never had any issues with the automatic transmission, which is good. It's a six-speed automatic transmission. And it also has the Tiptronic, so you can actually control all of the gears within one 
push of the stock. So it's the right way. So it's downshift up and upshift down. So it's the proper way, similar to what the race car drivers use as well. Some of the tech features in this car include a full screen color display in the middle, which can read out the speedometer. You've got the fuel economy on the top left, range on the top right, Celsius on the bottom left, and time on the bottom right. You can customize all of your settings here, so you can have the speedometer where it is or anything really. It's really comprehensive. It stores all engine fault codes in this menu. Playing, trip B, trip A, how much fuel economy you're getting. If it's a full flower, you're getting really great fuel economy. It also has tire pressure system here, so it can tell you immediately when you need to fill up the tires. Coolant temperature, oil temperature, when to have an oil change or not. It also has a speedometer, big letters right in the middle. You can also change that by hitting right. It'll go back to a traditional speedometer. You get the fuel gauge on the right, or the fuel door is on the right as well. And you've got the RPM gauge on the left. It goes up to six and a half thousand revolutions per minute. It also shows you all the lights in the cluster as well. And on the bottom of the screen there, when you turn on the car. You can customize that all you want as well. They included a Uconnect 8.4 inch touchscreen, which is pretty nice. It has navigation built in, Bluetooth, surround sound, all that. You can also plug in a flash drive and listen to all of your music right on demand. The navigation system is pretty seamless. You can put any destination in and search up anything. You have full navigation control here. The traffic button might come up on the navigation sometimes, and that will tell you if there's any obstruction in the road or any other traffic or anything, which is only in maybe cities, big cities or something. Data, you can trip plan, which is super sweet. World clock, see what the time zones are around the world calculator. You also have got a unit converter, just in case if you're in a pinch. You can also change any of the system settings, change all the navigation so you can avoid tolls, highways, U-turns, ferries, carpool lanes, unpaid roads, or traffic. You can also have voice prompt on. You can also have a show trip log, which is like breadcrumbs, so it kind of leaves your breadcrumbs behind you. You can also have traffic on or off. It has FM, AM built in, so that's pretty nice. The standard stuff. It has AM radio. You can have up to 12 stations saved. You can also load in the map whenever you want. You have FM stations and satellite radio, which you have to pay for, but that is life. You can go into browse, presets, Favorites, game zone, if you'd like. I think that's only in America. Traffic and weather, I think it's only in America. You can also rewind any of your stations. However long you're listening to, you can rewind up to. Whatever that is, you can't rewind past where you started playing the station. It also has a balance and fade. You can adjust where you'd like the sound to come from. You also have the equalizer, bass, mids and treble. You have speed adjusted volume. You can have off one, two, three, and it basically the faster you go, the more louder it will get. You also have music info cleanup. You also have surround sound, off or on. You can also play all of your favorite songs from anyone. You can also have the map on. You can choose the info and play similar songs that are related to this and you can select all the tracks you'd like. You can also move with the browse dial. You can go into folders that you've saved on the USB flash drive. It sorts by folders, artists, 
playlists, songs, even albums and genres. You can even search by ABCs. You can do this while driving as well. You can search, type in any artist, song. You can have your heated seat on, your heated wheel on, your heated seat passenger on. You can just turn the screen off if you'd like. You can have max AC, regular AC, recirculating air, auto climate control, front and rear defogger, which also does the side mirror defogger. So if you have any snow on there, it'll melt off. You have dual climate zone control. You can sync it off and on. You can go pair up to five devices. You can have up to two devices at once. When you have paired phones and paired audio sources, you can have like iPod Classic for the if that had Bluetooth or not, and pair that, and then have your phone connected. You can also have up to five devices. Make favorite to which devices you want to connect first. Disconnect device and delete device. It's super simple. You just go to add device and it initializes a pairing mode. Go into display. You can change it to day, night, auto. Display brightness with headlights. You can set the language. Select the voice response, change the units to United States or the rest of the world. You also have touchscreen beep, which I turned off because phones don't have that. And uh, you can have a navigation turn by turn displayed in the cluster, the main display when you're reading the speedometer. You can change the clock time, sync it, set wherever you want. You have the park assist, where it beeps when you reverse and it sees an obstacle, person, car. Reverse beeps as well. You also have blind spot alert, which is really awesome. You can detect cars when they're in a blind spot and it'll beep at you if it notices a car, which is a lifesaver. Blind spot. It also includes a motion detection alarm if anyone broke in or if any objects were moving in the car. You might need to turn this off if you have an American Shepherd or a Basset Hound or two. Depends on what you have. Park view backup camera. It has lines for when your car is coming in close. How close you are to any obstacles. It also has interior accent lighting around the whole head unit. The doors, the locks, auto unlock lock and you can adjust the mirrors here. The storage, you can have a coin holder for parking, both the driver and the passenger side. The headlights are HID, which are really bright, and fog lights as well. It also has an auto dim high beams, so if you're going on the highway when it's dark at night and it sees other cars, it will actually dim the high beams, which is super sweet and convenient. If a car is incoming, it will turn off the high beams. So it's flash lamps with lock. Amber turn signals, auto door locks, auto unlock on exit, turn it off because I don't want it too much wear and tear on my locks. Flash lamps with locks, sound horn with locks, sound horn with remote start, first key fob unlocks driver door or all doors. It also has a remote start. You just double click the key fob and it will remote start from maybe like almost a kilometer away, depending on how new your battery is in your key fob. Engine off power delay and headlight off delay. I have the custom phone mount here for the vent, which I close off. It all, you can all close off any vents. It's not like a Tesla, which is somehow more convenient, but this is the old school way where you slide for off and turn on. This also came with a 506 watt Alpine speaker, which sounds really nice. Nine speakers, surround sound, the whole thing. It also includes auto wipers, auto headlights, cruise control, volume and skip track buttons right behind the steering wheel. The fans do spin up a lot, so it can get kind of annoying. It includes heated seats and heated steering wheel, which is really nice. They automatically come on when it goes under five degrees, so 
it's a nice touch when it's really cold outside. As I live in Canada and it's, and it's really cold here sometimes and the snow comes in heaps. Keyless entry, tap the button to lock, put your hand in the handle to unlock the car. And that goes for both sides. You put in the key, you ever get locked in, or if the battery dies, but that will trigger the alarm if you have the motion detection on. Sunglass holder. Two sunglasses at the same time. Radar detector auto dimming mirror, and sunroof to boot. You can vent, you can turn all the way automatically back to let in a lot of light and an airy open convertible experience. Tap auto to turn it back to its normal closed position. It also has home link, so you can have up to three garages. And also, visor test. Yes. Oh, baby. It also has a pass through. It's really handy for skis and anything else. Two cup holders for the back seats, and all the seats recline down. A box with soft open. It also has a cigarette lighter, so you can charge your devices. And it also has a USB and another cigarette lighter with plug in any device without having the car turning on in the middle console. You can also adjust the middle console for added support. We also have auto up and down for the front seats, both the passenger and the driver. Power, six way and lumbar four-way. You can also adjust the seat belt where you'd like it. Tall people at the top, shorter people for the bottom. You can adjust the headrests. Box test, the trunk's capacity is 13.1 cubic feet. It also includes an integrated antenna, Yakima roof rack not included. Here are my overall thoughts on this car. I really enjoy driving this car. The handling is amazing, and the speed is pretty decent for its time. Besides all the repairs and everything, if Dodge made a fully electric car, I would consider getting one. But in the meantime, I'll probably wait for Elon to announce the $25,000 car that comes out in the next few years. I'll pretty much probably go with Tesla. I'll pretty much go full electric and save the planet and everything, so whisper quiet, pass anyone in a heartbeat, you know, electric stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.